Do you know that Java, the object-oriented language, follows write once, run anywhere principle, which makes it highly portable and platform independent. Java code runs on any platform with the help of Java Virtual Machine. Nowadays, Java is used for various applications including web development, mobile apps, and enterprise software. This created a huge need of Java experts in the industry. According to Glassdoor, the average annual salary of a Java developer in United States is $94,000. If someone holds a senior Java developer position, their average yearly salary increases to $114,000. The upper limit of this salary range reaches to $180,000 annually. Hope this excites you to explore more in the world of Java. If you are looking to become a Java developer, then have a look at Postgraduate Program in Full Stack Development. With this amazing program, you will be benefited with Caltech CTME Postgraduate Certificate, receive up to 25 CEUs from Caltech CTME, attend master classes from Caltech CTME instructors, live virtual classes led by industry experts, hands-on projects, and integrated labs. By the end of this course, you will be skilled with Agile, Java, Hibernate, and JPA, Spring Core 50, HTML5 and CSS3, AWS, JavaScript, and there is a huge list on the board. Expertise in tools like Angular, CSS3, Docker, Git, HTML5, Jenkins, MongoDB, MySQL will add value to your resume. So hurry up and enroll now. Find the complete course details from the link in the description box. Millions of learners are benefited with our courses. Listen to the success story in their own words. Learning is growing and we not only decided to grow together in life but learn and succeed together as well. I successfully switched my career to full stack Java domain with a 15% salary hike. And I was able to grab new opportunities in my current organization and also receive a 10% salary hike. Hey, I'm Swamijit Basu. I'm a senior QA engineer at Encora Inc. And I am Shomi and I work as a senior quality analyst at Doodle Blue Innovation. We started our upscaling journey together with Simply Learn and certainly we made the right choice. After our marriage, I had to relocate to Bangalore and take a year gap after working for 5 years. But I decided to restart my career again and make a switch to software domain. So, I enrolled myself in Full Stack Java Developer program from Simply Learn. Seeing my wife's passion for learning every day inspired me to take up a course on Simply Learn as well. I've always been passionate about technology and learning DevOps was always in my bucket list. When I saw Simply Learn's collaboration with Caltech CTME, I decided to take a course on PG DevOps. After the course, I not only switched my career to full stack Java development with a 15% increment in the salary, but now also I can work from home since it's a software domain. And being the new mom, that's the best thing one could ask for to spend time with little one during these early years. For me, learning DevOps was fun and fulfilling at the same time. Earlier, I had to rely on others at work, but after upskilling myself, I single-handedly can set up the entire blueprint on my code base alone and get the desired output. And because of that, I could grab new projects in my organization with a 10% salary hike. We enrolled to upskill ourselves when we were expecting our first child. So, upskilling journey with Simply Learn would be undoubtedly very special to both of us. While doing the course, we did come across a lot of challenges due to the pregnancy, but my wife, Shomi, was a great inspiration for me as she was handling it all together and she kept motivating and inspiring me all the way. Moreover, the recorded classes and the weekend class helped us maintain the balance between work and learning. Apart from work, we love to spend time with our little one. Learning with Simply Learn was quite a fulfilling experience for both of us. We believe that growth doesn't happen overnight, rather it's a journey of several small steps and upskilling is one of them. Hello guys, this is Vikesh and let's get started with the first topic of this series, which is about introduction to Java. So when we talk about Java, it is one of the most popular programming language out there and it was created way back in 1991, but it was publicly released only in 1995. It was developed by one of the famous developers of our generation, who is James Gosling at Sun Microsystems, and then later Java was acquired by Oracle, and today Oracle owns Java. Java is very simple and easy to use, and we will look at different aspects of how it is easy and simple to use, it's a write once run anywhere type of programming language 
again we will look at details into 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 this particular concept as well and when we talk about the usage of java you can use it to build web applications mobile applications desktop applications even command line applications and at the same time you can also use it to build complex applications like gaming applications building microservices or building distributed computing etc let's talk about the features of java so one of the most prominent features of java is that it's a object oriented programming language which means that everything which happens in java happens around objects objects enable the execution of the program objects talk to each other to exchange data and messages we will look at look at the concept of objects in details in the upcoming lectures it's a platform independent language which means that uh, again going back to the previous point of write once run anywhere uh, it basically enables the program to be run on any platform once compiled so once you have prepared your program and you have compiled your program then your compiled program can be run on any platform it is a strong type checking language which means that it will force you to respect the contracts of the variables to the data types for example if you have created a collection which should accept strings then you can only insert strings in that collection and it will not allow you to add an a number or an integer into that collection so it's a strongly type checking language so when you run your program it's a two step process in java you compile the program and then you then you execute the program which we also call as interpretation so you have a java compiler and you have a java interpreter you first compile your program and then you run the program using the help of java interpreter java also provides automatic garbage collection it's a really important feature and if you talk about the languages prior to java like c or c++ they did not offer this capability and this capability made java really popular because it could automatically find the unused objects and variables and remove them from the memory to free up memory space for the program execution it also provides multi threading support which means that you can build multi threading applications like a gaming application if you take the example of a racing game for example so this they, they can be one thread which is monitoring your leaderboard score there can be another thread which is displaying the speed of the car there can be another thread which is displaying the graphic there can be another thread which is displaying the sound so you see all of these threads are working parallelly and java provides the support to create such applications using the multi threading capability it has java is secure by default because there are no pointers in java so there are no possibilities of having any memory leaks or any reference leaks from the application again if you take the example of uh, programming languages like c or c++ you had the concept of pointers and we we witnessed lot of uh, a lot of scenarios and lot of incidents where there was a memory leakage happening in the in the production application which was which was really a bad experience for the organizations so java removed the concept of pointers totally from its programming language it's also a very robust language because it provides a really great exception handling framework out of the box which developers can use and implement to build really resilient applications so now let us understand how a java program is run so at first you basically write your java program and you store your java program into a dot java file then you compile your java file with the help of the java compiler once the program is compiled the compiler is going to generate another file which is a dot class file and this dot class file is basically the compiled file or also known as the byte code file so this byte code or the, the dot class file code can be run on any platform be it a linux platform or a windows platform or a mac os platform or any other platform to give you some more context the first two steps where you write your java program and you compile your java program can be run on any machine let's take the example that you ran these two steps on a windows machine so you ran your uh, you write your program and you compile your program on a windows machine which generated a dot class file then you transported this dot class file to a linux machine and it also worked there you transported your dot class file to a mac os machine and it worked there as well and that's what brings the platform independence concept of java that you can write the program once on any platform 
and once you have the bytecode available then you can run this program on any other platform of your choice okay so that was about how the java program execution works and how the platform independence is actually achieved now uh, let us spend some time to understand the anatomy of java so once you download java and install java on your local machine you will hear the term jdk actually if you will see that in the next lecture that when you try to download the java it will say jdk download jdk stands for java development kit so the java development kit is the installation of the java this is what you're going to install on your machine once the jdk or java development kit has been installed the jdk will provide lot of other components as well like java runtime environment or jre java virtual machine or jvm some class libraries and some other supporting libraries so let us understand what happens when your program is run and how these components work together to make sure that your program runs as expected let's start from here so you install jdk or the java development kit you write your program and then you compile your program with the help of java compiler which is provided by jdk once the program is compiled your dot class file will be generated and then you can uh, run that dot class file using jre in fact if you just run your program on your local machine jre will automatically kick in and run your dot class file so the java runtime environment or jre runs your dot class file with the help of these three components let's talk about first component which is java virtual machine or jvm so the java virtual machine is actually the virtual environment inside which your program runs this is the real main environment inside your dot class file is running so when uh, when this program is running how does it achieve this environment for achieving this virtual virtual machine environment it would need some runtime libraries and that is provided by these class libraries for example there would be a runtime jar or rt.jar as a shorthand which will be supplied to the program at the runtime to make sure that the program runs smoothly then there are other supporting libraries as well which your program may be using for example if this program this dot class file is let's say a calculator program then it might be using uh, a square root function from java.math package so how do how does the java.math package get supplied at runtime it would be supplied by the other supporting libraries which are present inside jre so jre will make sure that your program runs inside the java virtual machine it gets the required runtime libraries and it also gets the libraries which are referred in your program at runtime and this all together will make sure that your program is running so you can see jdk basically uh, provides jre automatically and jvm automatically but you can also install jre separately if you talk about that use case where you compile your program on a windows machine using jdk and then you exported your dot class file to another machine and there you just installed the jre you don't install jdk there you just install the runtime environment and you can run the dot class file just using the runtime environment and that brings us to the end of this lecture let's get started with installing java we will basically look at how we can install java on a windows machine so the first step to install java is to download it from the official oracle website so for that let's open a web browser and let's type jdk java download and hit enter then you need to find the link which says oracle.com because like we discussed in the previous lecture uh, java is owned by oracle so we need to download it from the official website only so we can click on this link which says java se downloads it will bring us to the downloads page and we will see different versions of java you can see the java se 15 you can see java se 14 you can also see java se 11 and all the previous versions under another thing which you will notice that it says lts here which means long term support basically long term support are the releases for which oracle is going to provide uh, long term security patches and updates for the non lts releases java will not provide long term support and long term patch fixes and long term security fixes so it's a good idea to analyze and evaluate on which version you want to develop your applications on 
for this demo, I think it is fine. We can go with the non LTS version. And even for your, uh, for your customer facing applications, you can start with the non LTS version and then upgrade to the latest LTS version whenever that is available. So for this demo, we can download Java SE 15 and you can also do the same on your machine. It will work exactly the same way as an LTS works. So you can click on the JDK download option here. Let's click on that. It is going to bring up the downloads detail page and you can see uh, there are multiple options given here uh, in terms of what platform you want to install Java on, whether it is a Linux platform or it is a Mac OS machine or it is a Windows platform. So like I said in the beginning of the demo that today we are going to see how we can install this on a Windows machine. So I'm going to download the Windows X64 installer here. If you are working on a Linux machine or a Mac OS machine, you can download those respective installers as well. So you can see the exe here. So let's click on this. Once we click on this, we'll get this pop up, which will ask us to accept the Oracle Technology Network License Agreement. So we can hit this checkbox and click on download JDK 15. And this shall start the download and you will see some, some exe getting downloaded in, uh, in your download box here. But as the download is going to take some time and uh, I'm not going to wait for that. And that's the reason I have already downloaded the JDK 15 for this particular demo. And that JDK is, is sitting here on my desktop, which I've downloaded pri prior to this demo. So we'll just run this particular EXE, which is exactly the same EXE as the one which is being downloaded. So let us double click on this. It will ask you for this pop-up in some cases. So you can just hit yes. Basically, it is asking whether you trust this EXE or not. But as we downloaded this from official Oracle website, then we can trust this particular EXE. So I will hit yes. And now the installer is going to unpack and you might get a screen like this, which will be an installation wizard for the Java SE development kit 15. Another thing which before I proceed, I just wanted to highlight that as well, that you might have noticed the word JDK here. It's exactly the same term which we covered in the last lecture that when you install Java, you basically install the JDK, which is the Java development kit. And this is also visible here when it says Java SE development kit 15. So let's hit next. Then on this particular page, you have the option to change the installation location of Java if you want to. By default, it is going to install in C program files slash java slash jdk 15 but if you want to change the location and you want to install java to a particular custom location of your choice that is also possible you just hit change here and then you can choose whatever directory or folder or place you want to install this uh, java on and you can uh, basically select the appropriate location for this particular case i don't want to change that i'm happy with the default location which is available here so i'm just going to proceed with this particular location here so I'll, i will just hit next and then java is going to install and it's it's very fast installation it generally takes few seconds as you will see in this demo basically it is going to unpack all the all the libraries and all the runtime libraries and all the class path libraries which we discussed in the previous lecture and put all that into the location which we specified to install java it will also set up the rest of the prerequisites which are required to run Java successfully. So looks like the Java has been successfully installed as is visible in this message. And there's also a next step if you want to uh, access the tutorials or the API documentations, the developer guides, the release notes, etc. I don't want to do that. So I will just hit close here. And now if we want to just verify if Java is, uh, is installed or not, then we can in, uh, verify that from the command line prompt. Let me just exit this and let's go to the command prompt to verify to see if Java has been successfully installed. So to do that, uh, we'll, we'll just open the search bar and we'll type CMD. It is going to show us this command prompt here. We'll click on this and it will open the command prompt for you like it has opened for me. And there you just need to type Java hyphen version and you hit enter. If you get a message like this, it means Java has been successfully installed. If you get a message saying that Java is not recognized as a command, it means that Java is still not successfully installed and something has gone wrong in your installation. And in that case, you might want to restart. You might want to go back and reinstall this, 
Java EXE again. So in this case, it looks like it has been successfully installed and we can also get some interesting information from here. We can see which version of Java has been installed. It says Java version 15. We can also see that the JRE is also installed. The Java SE runtime environment or JRE is also installed. And we can also see that the JVM is also installed, which is Java hotspot server VM. VM means the virtual machine. So if I connect this back to the previous lecture, we can see that uh, the, the Java JDK basically installed the JRE as well as the JVM as well. And the complete Java package has been successfully installed. Now we are ready to use Java, uh, a Java program and run Java programs on this machine. And at this step, I would like to conclude this lecture. In the next session, we will be discussing how we can install Eclipse because that would be the natural next step for any Java developer that they want to install Java and then they want to install Eclipse and start working. Let's get started with installing Eclipse on a Windows machine. So the first thing which we need to do is to download Eclipse. So for that, I'm just going to open my web browser and type Eclipse download, press enter. And then you need to find the link which says eclipse.org slash downloads, which is the first link in my search results. You can also see it says Eclipse downloads, the Eclipse Foundation. And Eclipse Foundation is the, is the organization which maintains the Eclipse installers. So we can click on this. Once we click on this, we will be redirected onto the Eclipse downloads page. And there again, you will see a bunch of options. You will see the default option highlighted, which would be the Eclipse installer for, uh, uh, for JRE, for Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. And then you have some other tool platforms option as well, like Eclipse G or Orion, which you might want to use for advanced cases. But for running Java applications, all you need is an Eclipse installer, which is coming from here. So based on your machine, Eclipse will automatically detect whether you want a 64-bit installer or a 32-bit installer. And you can just click on this particular link, which says download 64-bit here. So I'm just going to hit download 64-bit. It is going to open this particular screen where based on your current location, Eclipse will suggest the nearest possible distribution mirror. Distribution mirror is basically a server which is present somewhere uh, in this world, which contains this Eclipse installer EXE. And Eclipse has created these servers all across the globes. These servers are basically called the mirrors. And based on your current location, which will be deducted, taken, taken from your ISP, from the internet IP address from which you are accessing this particular website. So based on your ISP location, it is going to suggest you the nearest possible mirror location so that your download is the fastest. So in my case, the nearest location is Netherlands here, as you can see, and I get a download option. This is the file name, which says Eclipse installer JRE Windows 64.exe. And if you think that this mirror doesn't make sense, just click on this option, select another mirror, and then you can choose another mirror. But generally it works really well. It works based on, it works based on your IP location and, and it's generally, uh, the download speed is pretty good based on the suggested mirror. So I'm not going to change the mirror location because I think this works fine for me. So, and I'm just going to click on this particular button, which is going to start the download of the Eclipse installer. So now I have, I have hit the download button and you can see right now an EXE has been download, uh, has begun to download. Uh, it is going to again take some time and uh, I have already downloaded this particular EXE just to save us some time. And I'm going to use that EXE to showcase how we can install it. Another thing just wanted to highlight is that Eclipse is an open source organization. It works on donations. So if you feel generous about it, and if you feel that Eclipse is doing really great work, you can also donate to it, which we'll show here. So we can move to the next step, which is about installing. So you can see here, I have an installer here, an EXE file basically, which I have pre-downloaded to showcase this demo. I'm just going to double click on this and it is going to unpack the installer. You can see this, uh, this icon will be presented to you, which says Eclipse installer by Oomph. Oomph is basically the provider for this particular installer who manages the installer. And based on your computer's capacity and speed, it is going to take few seconds. And in the background, what it is doing is basically it is unpacking this installer and creating all the installation files, 
which it needs to successfully install it on your computer. Once that is done, you will be presented with this kind of screen and you will see that Eclipse provides multiple different kind of IDEs for different set of developer communities. You will see an option which says Eclipse IDE for Java developers. You will also see Eclipse IDE for enterprise Java developers. You will see the IDE for C++ and C developers, web and JavaScript, PHP, Eclipse committers who basically contribute to the Eclipse organization or uh, RCP, RAP, tester, scientific computing. There are tons of IDEs which Eclipse maintains. For our use case throughout this series, I think we will be focusing on this particular IDE, which says Eclipse IDE for enterprise Java developers. You can also use this particular IDE, but this is a very bare bone IDE with very limited set of integrations. Like it says, it includes a Java IDE, a Git client, an XML editor, a Maven plugin, and a Gradle plugin. But if you look at the enterprise, you will get more integrations. You can use this particular IDE to work on whatever you work here. So these all will work here. But in addition, you can also use this IDE to build a web application, build a web service, build a JPA application, data tools, Java server pages, faces, etc. So this is more, uh, more advanced, I would say. And we will go with this particular IDE. And uh, you can also choose this IDE if you want to, but for this demo, we are going to choose this one. I will click on this. Then it is going to show me which virtual machine it is going to use. So if you remember in the previous lecture, we installed Java 15. It has automatically detected that location by reading my C program files folder, and it has automatically taken that. If you have multiple JDK installations on your machine, you can click on this icon and change a different Java virtual machine. I'm going to leave it as is. Again, the installation folder is also by default taken to your C users username slash Eclipse slash the JEE uh, version number. And again, if you want to change this, you can also change a different installation folder. I'm going to leave everything as default. It will automatically create a start menu entry and a desktop shortcut. And now I hit install. It might come uh, ask you for a, a user agreement. So you can hit accept now. And now it has begun the installation. The installation generally takes a bit of time to complete in some cases. So again, it depends upon your, in your, in your computer's uh, capacity and uh, speed, basically. If it's a good robust machine with uh, with good capacity, the installation might be very fast as you can see in my computer. And if you have a, a computer which is not very strong on configurations, you can just be patient and wait for some time and the installation will be finished. Once the installation is finished, you will see this launch option here. You will also has, have an option to keep an installer if you want to show the readme file. But I think the, the main option here which we are gonna use is the launch option. So if you hit the launch option, 